Welcome back to Kumamoto. It's uh, quarterfinals day here at the Kumamoto Masters in Japan. Well, after the battle of the Olympic uh, champions, past and present, we turn our attention to men's singles. And uh, it is uh, Kento Momoto, the two-time former world champion in a repeat of the 2018 World Championship final against the Asian Games silver medalist Xi Yuqi of China. Well, as far as the men's singles draw is concerned from quarter-final stage, we only have three seeds, just one in the bottom half of the draw, as you can see, and that's the man we're about to watch, Xi Yuqi. Five different nationalities, three players from Japan. My goodness me, I haven't had uh, time to research the last time that happened at this level of event, but I wouldn't mind betting it was some time ago. Well, here come the two players, Pinto Momota, and here the man he beat in the 2018 World Championship final. The number four seed here, Xi Yuqi of China. So this will be a 12th meeting, I can tell you, between these two players and of the previous 11. I do beg your pardon. The previous 11, Kinta Momota, has won six of them. There we are, that confirms that. The last time they met was in the second round of the Korean Open earlier this year. That was a 500 oh. event, Rack. the same as this. That's right. okay. So, I believe that Xi Chi won the toss of the coin and has chosen ends. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, I wasn't totally sure there. I don't know if Momota did, and then he chose to serve. OK. But certainly Xi Chi, I think, chose which end he wished to yeah. start. So how wonderful to see this man back on the world stage, Kento Momota. My goodness me, he had uh, tough times after his car accidents in Malaysia. Uh, that was back in 2020, and in all honesty, he's never been the same player since. He is 29 years of age, born in uh, Kagawa. That's on the island of Shikuku. Uh, went up 11 places after winning his first title last week for two years. And as you can see, he's come through the qualifying. Two rounds of qualifying, then the world champion from 2021, Loken Yu, needed three games there. And three games against Rasmus Genka came from 8-14 down in that deciding game. 13 of the next 15 points to close it out. 21-16 in that decider. Shi Yuqi is 27 years of age from uh, Nangtong in Jiangsu province. Uh, tall athlete, as you can see, that equates to about six foot tall. And he spent a total of 52 weeks across three different spells at number two in the world but currently number seven. Not only his uh, silver medal at the World Championships in 2018 against his opponent of today, also was silver medalist at the recent Asian Games in Hangzhou. Uh, so his path through to this quarterfinal, the first round, he beat uh, Kenta Nishimoto in three games. And then the beaten finalist of the China Super 1000 event, his teammate. So our court officials from Thailand and Indonesia. Well, to all badminton fans, I think it was just an absolute delight to see this man, Momota, win the Korean Masters last week. 
but it does mean that this quarter-final is his 10th match in 10 days. And I can't help but think that that might take its toll. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Kento Momota, Japan. And on my left, Shi Yushi, China. Kento Momota, Kutsuk, Love Ball, Play. So the former world number one. Enter Momota. Getting this quarterfinal underway. And Chris, I was saying that Kento Momota, 10th match in 10 days. Here this week in Momota, it's his fifth match. Total time on court to get to this quarterfinal. Four hours, 37 minutes. For Shi Uchi, just two matches, of course, to get to the quarterfinal. And his time on court, two hours, 17 minutes. So two hours, 20 minutes longer for the left-hander to get through to the quarterfinal stage. That's got to take its toll, surely. Yeah, I think it's impossible not. I mean, when you hear that time difference, I mean, some people might say, well, hold on a sec, but that's not really that long each day, because obviously, as professional athletes, we would train for up to maybe four hours a day, but it is so different being in a tournament environment to being in training. It's so different because you've got the emotional side of it. It, it. Tournament is so hard to recreate that environment. It's so much more fatiguing. And as you said, he's over two hours more so far. Um, well, more than twice as, as long as his opponent's been on court. And it's That's just like, just makes you think if this was going to go to three games, Yushi Yuchi, you're just thinking almost extend the rallies because he, he we, I struggle to to understand how he couldn't have the physical advantage in, in regards to duration. Um, at the beginning of the match, it might not be quite as obvious, but I just as the longer the game goes on, I can't understand how Momoto will be able to maintain the speed rally after rally. But maybe he can because he is, you know, he is a special player and he definitely was a special player. Just wide. Well, I think many people, and possibly yourself included, thought that when he was um, so far down, 8-14 down in his match against Gemper yesterday, I think possibly many people thought that, yep, yeah, he's down and out. Yeah, but that's the thing, I think. I'm going to be honest, I, I did think it was going to be so tough to come back, but, you know, he has been world number one and he is a special player. So, it's starting to show more and more that he is coming back to, you know, the level that he was, even with his belief, he believed that he still could win being... I mean, after however long it was exactly when he was 14-8 down, it, to come back from that, that is truly an incredible comeback. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. But the sad reality of life is that just because you've been a great player in the past, and there's no doubt in my mind that Pomolta was a great player, and that that player can never reproduce that form again. I mean, when you think back to 2019, 11 titles in one year. I mean, that is absolutely extraordinary. Yeah, you know, you, you look at some of the top tennis players, you know, will Rafa Nadal ever be able to play his top level again? I don't know. I have question marks in my own mind. What I know is that it is absolutely delightful to see Momota playing so well again. Whether he can get back to what he was before, I have question marks. Yeah, but I think that's the integral thing, as you said. It's, it's amazing for badminton that someone who was so good at one stage in a one-on-one, -on -one, to win that many titles in a year is absolutely phenomenal at our sport because even to win week after week is difficult, let alone to win that many titles. And it's great, though, to see last week something that was very evident was the smile on his face. He was enjoying playing again, which I think maybe had been missing just a little bit in some previous tournaments. 
obviously when you're winning, it is definitely more enjoyable. So impressive was his movement around the head position. Watch his movement back here. So fast. Yeah, he read it, read it incredibly well. He knew exactly where it was going. Oh, that may have been going wide. using all four corners of the court. Pushing opponents to the back, then bringing them forward. Yeah, every inch of the court explored in that rally. And the longest rally so far as well at 38 shots. So if I show no signs of this fatigue, he's had an incredible start to the game. Yosuke Nakanishi. Here is to us as we look at the Japanese coaching bench. Oh, that's quick forward. Good follow-up. Yeah, that's really impressive here. Reads this well, but then the follow-up, as you said, how quick forward. It's a simple, just a short punch action with the kill. You've got to build the rally first. You've got to work your opponent. You've got to move them about the court. Five straight points for Momota. Uh, but that run comes to an end. Fantastic player, and as you said, he'd been world number two for a, a total of 52 weeks or a, you know, a, a broken up period of time, but he is, and he's still kind of coming back to that level as well. Seems to have a problem against his teammate, though, Lucy Shifang, because lost to him in the All England final this year, lost him in the final of the Asian Games. And, and I have thought on occasions since Xiu Qi has been back in World Badminton because he was suspended by his National Federation for a year. And since he's come back, I've wondered a little bit about his stamina. I think it almost looks like sometimes his concentration wavers in regards to some of the choices he made regarding shot choices. Even there, I don't, for me, it's the wrong, the wrong choice of shot. You know, Momoto's at the net, he's, he's ready for anything at the net. He's got to go over him and almost start the rally again. And especially when he faced Li Shifeng, some of the things he, he's done, I find a little bit 
different to what I would have thought he would have done. A fantastic show. That's how dangerous he is overhead. I do think often when you play your own teammate, the games can often be a little bit strange just because you're so used to playing each other in training. I'm sure being the number one and two in China, they play each other so often yeah, in training. Yeah, I, I'm questioning his uh, overall stamina, not just in the matches I've seen him against his teammate in Xi Fan. Uh, I've, I've seen it in general. But you're right, I mean, he's a great play. attacking player. The issue is whether he can play that attacking style the entirety of the match. Just wide. And back level. of the last seven points to Shi Yu Chi. Oh, that's delightful. My goodness me. He looked as if he was going to lift the shuttle with a little bit of an extra swing of the racket as he came forward. And then just seemed to chop underneath the shuttle to play the perfect net shot. So Shi Uchi, a two-point advantage at the game. seven of the last eight points prior to the mid-game interval in favour of Shi Uchi. Somehow, Omota has got to stop this momentum. And it's not happening yet. Yeah, at the moment we're seeing the great attacking prowess of Shi Uchi. It's short. When you, when a few of the lifts from my motor so far have been a little bit short and you can't allow Huji a short lift because he's so dangerous normally overhead, let alone when it's a short lift. Fantastic placement on that overhead from a motor.
Now that's the sort of rally that I'm interested to see how Chi Chi responds to that. Hard physical rally. That last shot, Chi Chi, I'm not really too sure what he's trying to play there. It's totally the wrong shot. It's just far too low to be trying something like that. This rally so far by some considerable margin. You can see when he did that movement, he kind of, he had a good idea where he was going. He hadn't fully recovered forward. He was waiting back because he knew that there was a second, second lift coming in, an incredible slice. And this is the thing about men's singles now, the accuracy of the players is so good. I mean, you're talking an inch, two inches inside the line. This man, La Molta, had 15 first or second round losses from 18 tournaments played until he won last week. What, what, what happened to his game that he, there was such a catastrophic effect? Well, this is the thing. So I watched him in Indonesia, uh, Indonesian Open in sort of June time, and, and he... He was a shadow of himself in regards to he looked unfit. He didn't look that motivated. I don't, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a case of he had a few niggly, um, troublesome injuries that were causing... What, after the surgery from, from the ass possibly, accident? I don't know. Or, or if, you know, parts of his... He wasn't... That was an incredible shot. He wasn't maybe training in the right way, that he wasn't in the right condition. Because when I saw him play, he looked heavily fatigued when the rallies weren't really that long. He looked out of shape in regards to just his fitness level in the match, but also his his hunger, his desire, it wasn't there. Now, we had a similar-ish thing with Lizzy Jar to an extent where he he made the statement at Indonesian Open again of he kind of was going to take a break in yeah. regards to he fell out of love with the sport a little bit to an extent. I don't know if my motor needed a time to focus on training, get himself back, because last week, he was a totally different player. He looked like he was his old self again. Yeah. Probably right. That's that. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no doubt he had a back injury. When he came back after this fateful car crash he was involved in after the Malaysian Masters, um, you know, he had an operation on his eye. Then he, he played lots of badminton in 2021 when we had the Sudaman Cup followed by the Thomas Cup, uh, followed by the Denmark Open. He picked up a back injury. But when he came back from that, I felt he changed his style of play. I felt that tactically, it wasn't just a, a fitness issue. I felt he was trying to play too safe. I don't think he was adventurous enough. And I think that, for a player who relied so heavily on his skills, had a real catastrophic effect on his results. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he has got an incredible defence. Um, he can move the shuttle round very, very well, and he, he definitely did get really passive. But I don't know, I just for a player to drop his level that much, there were there were definitely other things that, I, for me anyway, I think they were playing a part in regards to his his hunger, his desire, his 
what was his actual training quality like? How hard was he training? And it, these other factors now could be wrong. No one really knows but himself. But the most integral thing is it, it's a joy to see him back to heading in the right direction. There's the adventurous attacking play that took him to world number one. And world number one for a total of 121 weeks. I think there with that attack as well, it was just a phenomenal, you know, he's so accurate. He's slightly off balance. He's not in a bad position, but I wouldn't say he's in a great position, but it's just the quality, the quality of his shot. Good. That's landed on the line. Yeah, clearly. There's a few, few different names for it, um, but yeah, it's, it's you know, striking it as high as possible, as early as possible, with a, a steep angle and good placement, rather than focusing on the power as such. It's great defence from Shi Chi. incredibly well to pick that one up. And this is the thing, as soon as Xu Qi gets on balance in a good position here, he just reads it, he can see he's quite comfortable that his body weight's coming in the right direction, so he's on balance when he strikes it. When he gets that chance, he's so accurate, he's so dangerous overhead.
match played to perfection to bring him to game point opportunities. Slightly concerned that Momota seemed to be shaking a leg there. Was that a little bit of pain, maybe a little bit of cramp? That wouldn't be altogether surprising to me. doing their best to raise the spirits of Momota. Momota points to the sideline, asks his coaches, should he have played it? Was it going out? I think he should have played it, but I don't think Shi Chi should have played his final shot because I'm sure Momota's shot was going wide. point opportunity is brilliantly converted by Xi Chi. 21-17, the opening game. And what a wonderful smash to end it. 26 minutes for game number one there. And the clenched fist shows that he really is delighted with taking that opening game against the full world number one. One game to the goods, Xi Yu Chi. 21 17 that opening game against the former world number one and two time world champion, home favourite Kento Momota. Oh, goodness me. 
absolutely commanded the rally there, she achieved, wasn't it? Yeah, and the last shot almost sums it up because look at this, steps in, look how early he is. He's on the, he's on the front service line when uh, Momoto's playing his backhand because he's that confident, because he's that far ahead as in he'd taken every shot early. So as you said, he was commanding the rally. Now that wasn't that close to the line, but Momota just did not react. I don't know whether that's no power left in the legs or whether it was because of the disguise of the direction of the smash. I think just because Rishi Cheese he has got the cross court, he's got the straight, he's, he's got the variation. You know, we saw the latter stage of the, the, the first game, he was hitting straight winners, cross winners. So it just puts that doubt in Momoto's mind exactly where it's going. So sometimes it doesn't even have to be quite as accurate. Now that rally, it was Momota that was commanding the rally, dictating the pace a totally different outcome. That's it on that last shot from Xiu Qi, just trying to play too tight. He's in a good position, he's on balance. It doesn't have to be a perfect shot. But those are the little signs to me, Chris, that Xiu Qi, sometimes that, you know, his stamina may be not as it should be, or maybe not as it was, That's landed on the line. You know, so often I see him in a good position and he makes the error because he, he basically wants to play a winning shot. He doesn't want to use it as a setting up shot. That net shot should always have been a setting up shot. Yeah, and that's the thing, it's hard to know, is it? He's forcing it, he's expecting to win the rally. He's he's almost trying to win the rally too early on. Is it linked with his fitness or is it linked with kind of the, the mindset of trying to win the rally too early? Oh, my goodness! Brilliant! What a rally! Four, one. That is just sensational. Goes for the kill, Momota gets it back. And then look at that final little block across court. How delightful was that? And on that final shot, Xi Chi just steps in and sort of stumbled in, but he stepped in, took it early, and it was impossible for Momota to chase that down. Nice. I think even though it's going to be hard work, the only way I can see Momota coming through this is if he starts taking more initiative in the rallies. Instead of being reactive, being proactive. Yeah, and this is the thing you can't... It's almost impossible to win unless you're in an incredibly slow haul being reactive and, you, you know, you've got incredible fitness because if you are reactive, you're reacting to what your opponent's doing, which means they're controlling or dictating the rally. So yeah, we, and he can do that. I think it's it's a case of fully committing to each point, even if you know the fatigue's getting him or the mental side of it. He feels like it's going to be a big challenge. Phenomenal. It's the thing with Chi Chi when he gets that chance, when he's on balance, in a good position, he just gets up. Look at this. It is short, but it's so dangerous. I'm not... I think it's the trajectory that Momota is struggling with. I said right at the start that Xi Chi is a tall athlete. He's six foot tall. And I think Momota is just eating those punch clears a little too flat. Great pick up. Yeah, there we are. Much higher. The trajectory is so important with a lift. You want the lift to go over your opponent, but you don't want to give him too much time. And if you get that wrong, it can really put you in trouble.
push again, to me, was too flat from Mamolta. Didn't actually see it. Certainly that desperation clear, that last one. Not deep enough. Yeah, a bit more height. Get in. Got it over him. Oh, there we go. You don't see that often at this level. Just, just that hold, that hold, and then almost last second push just makes it so deceptive. Big thing is now, she, she just got to forget that. He can't let that affect him. It's one point. He's still won the first game and he's 7 3 up. back again. And again there. That's a good body. another example of when Chi Chi gets tired in the rally. His touch shots go. On, um, that one was woefully short, wasn't it? And it's also just too much time. He's so unbalanced, Chi Chi. He's not off balance. His body's going in the direction he wants to hit the shuttle, and he's, he is so accurate overhead. You have to outmaneuver your opponent, but the integral thing is your opponent can't be as accurate or as dangerous if they're off balance, if they're going the wrong way. situations for the umpire you know it could be a almost a millimeter it's almost they need to bring in some kind of computer system to be able to analyze it Ten, four. it just feels like the task is getting bigger and bigger for the motor as the lead is growing I do think his pace is fractionally, only fractionally slow, but at this level when you, you just get a fraction slower, you're nowhere near as dangerous, you're half a step behind your opponent. Yeah, Jackie is coaching bench, looking rather concerned. It's great tactical awareness from Chi Yu Chi. It's not just the accuracy of his shots. The sky is drop, cross court, and it is a very handsome lead at the mid game interval.
the expression is desperate times test calls for desperate measures what would your desperate measures be here chris for momota it's a, it's a tough one because we're talking about playing you know a, a very very high level player and we can't really talk about using an injection of speed or you know trying to physically outlast your opponent because i don't think he's got that left in the tank He's got to take slightly calculated risks with his shot selection in regards to hitting a shot but analysing where the next shot's going to come so that he can try and use that. I mean, he can't really afford to play tighter because he's fractionally late on most shots, which is just going to cause the, you know, an increased chance of an error. So this is why it's such a big ask right now. feel like he's, he is trying to push up the tempo slightly. Yeah, I think that he has to dictate the pace of the rallies so that he's making chi chi work. And despite the fact that Momota has been on court for over two hours, 20 minutes longer than his opponent, if he's dictating the pace, then there aren't so many opportunities for Xiu Chi to use that explosive attacking play that you've been talking about. Yeah, no, I would agree. I'd say the big, the big difficult thing is, has Momoa got enough in him to be able to do that? Yeah, I, and I, I get that completely. I understand exactly what you're saying. But I think that while he's dictating the pace, it doesn't have to be all quick pace. As long as he's keeping in control of the rallies so yeah i don't think he's got it in him i don't think physically he can play at a fast pace but i think he could control the rallies better yeah i mean he can from his, his shot selection and shot quality he can uh, but it is a big ask but this is the thing it's, it's not all or nothing as in it's not uh, life and death in regards to how, how severe the situation is he's 12 7 down and he, since the break he's had a nice little comeback Yeah, umpire was very sharp there, calling a fault for the shuttle touching the floor before she she returned it. striking it behind the, the, the front service line, but it's so accurate. And I think Japanese fans will be a little concerned by the body language. Look at this after the rally from Momota. Yeah, never give up. There we go. Exactly the right moment. something from nothing almost. Thank you. 
Olympics. We are at the point of now or never, as far as Momoto is concerned. crowd in here today. Super smash again. There's the accuracy you were talking about. This is the thing, this is why, you know, all singles players can do some very basic exercises where they're working so much on the accuracy of the attack. When you get that chance, when you're on balance, you have to be accurate because you've got to take that chance when you when you get it. This huge physical effort from Mabolta. Moving quickly towards the shuttle, taking the shuttle early. And for me, it was the, the backhand cross court net that he played that set the rally up. For Shu, he, he, he was in so much trouble that the last smash was okay, but it wasn't fantastic. But it didn't have to be because Shu Chi was just struggling to even get the shot before that. It's a challenge here. It's the first challenge of this match, I think. The net. It sat on the top of the tape for a, what seemed like an age before deciding to go over. How good is that? Yeah, it's pretty much the perfection of a net shot. I would say, I know, I know it's not over, anything can still happen, but it's been a very solid professional performance from Shi Yuji. Yeah, I agree. And all those concerns I had about his stamina, well, he's looked very, very fit and in very good shape today. It's the speed of the follow-up that creates options, doesn't yeah. it? So quick into the net, how early he takes that. He can hit anything in that position because he's taken it that early. And Momoa has to worry about so many different op possible options. Two points away from the semi-final, Shiyuchi. One point away from the semi-final.
defiance. this time on his second match point opportunity. Shi Uchi reverses the results of the 2018 World Championship final, uh, beating Kento Momota. 21-17, 21-12 in 53 minutes. And I think the poor old Momota simply didn't have the spring in his legs when contesting his 10th match in 10 days. There, Xu Qi safely through to the semi-final where he will play against Chu Tian Chen of Chinese Taipei. So, as Chris was saying, a really solid professional performance today from this man. And one match too many, I think, for Momota. But I think on something we can all agree, Momota is back, and it is delightful to see him back playing so well. Confirmation of that scoreline, 21-17, 21-12, in a match that's been rounded up to 53 minutes.